off-grid contractor and in this video today I'd like to share with you a 20 kW solar install that we've done. Um, this is broke up in three different segmentations which the first one will show you is a um, two houses together now um, that is powered off of it and then we'll show you a workshop and a small cottage that is powered off of that and then we'll show you a barn and a small cottage that's powered off of the last segmentation. Um, so what you see behind you here these are REC Twin Peaks. These are 290 watt modules. This has uh, been broke up in four different arrays. This is on three inch pipe. Um, the wind's already been up to like 70 mile an hour up here due to the storms and stuff that's went on. Um, and so uh, that's, that's definitely the structural integrity that you want to hold on to that. Um, this was built with Iron Ridge. Um, this is in a split V. Because um, if you walk over here with me and I can show you right here. Uh, we've got this one is oriented in southwest and this one's south facing um, and both the rays uh, we tried to do as clean as possible you can see the conduit exit right there that's pretty much it everything is tucked neatly up behind the array or the grounding the only thing you see that's out to the ground there is the grounding rod itself so I mean we've we've tried in this new year ahead to really be super clean um, with the install work we do um, also, um, we're trying to make sure uh, with the grounding bonds and everything uh, to tie it in as neatly as possible. Uh, the other array that's uh, further on down, we'll show you later, that's the with the workshop. It's also oriented southwest facing because the workshop is used uh, kind of in the mornings and the evening time. So that way the bulk up is in the evening so it can set being ready for the next day to be used. Um, but with that said, we'll step inside. I'll show you the setup, the inverter system, and the charge control system for these, and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so we're inside the uh, customer structure, and once again, I just want to uh, say a thank you to the customers that allow us to do this because we respect everyone's privacy. We've done a lot of installs that we didn't get the opportunity to share. It's always a blessing to get to share these whenever we can. Uh, the initial setup that we've done for them is we have 16 nanocarbons. Um, they're all parallel. We have the solar system broke up into the two segments. They're coming in on their separate charge systems. It was a very clean LB just into the house, back wall here. And the way that we done with the Magnums is for right now, we've got 60 amp service, which is feeding two different air conditioning systems, refrigerators, um, a dryer, I mean, pretty much anything you have standard home, um, a split stove that's propane and electric. Um, a lot of appliances are fed off this, but the customer is moderating their usage. And also later, um, we may be adding a third inverter, which is gonna go here, um, which would be the second slave unit off. The, this is the master, that's the slave unit. We'll put a third one there later and tie into the router if that comes to be. Um, but for right now, we've already ran both air conditioning systems and compressor units for it, um, the refrigeration, all their um, appliances and stuff, pretty much it's running very fluid off the system as it stands. But if you want to have uh, the convenience of the utility company, uh, pretty much three of these in a home, you can go wide open because that's almost 100 amps worth of service because 30, 60, 90. Um, Thompson Electric, um, my friend Jeff that owns the company, um, uh, we've done this together in cooperation. Um, the AC service side, all the DC service side is done by us at Off Grid Contracting. All the AC utility was done by Thompson. Um, highly recommend them if you need any AC service work done. These are um, Eaton service panels, the R type. Um, uh, and the output on these, what we've got here is we've got the feed service coming in. I said these are BR type, but anyway, the uh, service panel, the feed's coming in. There's an availability now to put up to two more Magnums, which is not necessary. Um, a, a third one, if ever added, the availability's there now on the feed going in to the Magnum. This is the return going out and additional bonding for safety there. Um, never want a fire hazard. So both of those are uh, easily accessible coming in from the outside and we'll show you that work we've done out there. But that pretty much concludes the inside of this. This is super easy to operate with the RTR because right here it is a push of a button on the system. If for some reason it ever cuts off, um, you know, too much load demand, AC overload, you can just turn off the loads, turn the system right back on. Everything is automated uh, with this. There's a hard reset that, that's a good thing about these Magnum units is there's a hard reset on them. 
if for some reason you ever had a real bad cutoff, they do have an easy reset, 15 seconds, and then start her back up, which that's a very rare occasion that may ever happen, but if you do run too many loads at once off grid, um, there is a potential that. That's the only one thing about living off grid. If, if you want to run with a minimal output, you've got to moderate some things. You can still run anything you want, you just gotta moderate your lifestyle. Um, so with that said, we'll go outside and I'll show you the AC work, and then we'll move on to the next project. Okay, so now we're outside the customer structure. Um, this is the second structure that there's, there's actually like two homes. It's one home, but there's pretty much two structures separated. There's a lot of unique things that we've done with this project we've never done before in the field. And I'll get to that just very shortly. Um, but very clean exit on the building, just like the other LBs that come from the solar end. We come very clean exit there. Their landscaping's been restored back. Now, when we first showed up, uh, when me and Jeff worked on this together, um, dismantling this, we had a couple scenarios going on. The original utility service from the utility company was going in and then there was a Genrack auto transfer panel. Um, what we done is remove that from the equation. There is a load lockout in this panel. There is a load lockout in the interior panel. This one feeds to that house. This one feeds into this structure. Um, now there is a load lockout ability that the feed coming in from the solar can come in, but if for some reason the solar ever failed, they can go right back to the utility company. Now also in this mix, what we've done is we still reapplied the generator back to the system. We have a 100 amp transfer here that can segregate this house completely away from the utility company altogether. So anybody that's worried about uh, terrorist attack on the utility grid, um, the EMP fears, a lot of the stuff that goes on with people, if you're worried about the utility company being the killer of your off-grid system, this right here is pretty much a $200 fix. Upper position, we have the line side feed from the utility company that's powering the charging function or the bypass uh, transfer on the AC in the solar system. In the middle position, there is no power going to it, so if you're worried about any power getting to your uh, inverters at any point in time, because they're also contained subterranean now, don't have to worry about that, that, that is segregated completely. If we move into the last position, the generator now is in manual. So on the moment that we put that in the lower position and the generator is energized, now they can charge their battery bank up off that or bypass onto the house while having the utility company completely uh, cut off. So it's, it's the best of every scenario you could ever ask for, um, with the exception of that wind power is not a factor in it currently. Um, that pretty much concludes this, the large install down bottom that gets two of the rays. Or I'm gonna show you the next one is the workshop with the solar array that feeds it. And then lastly, we'll go up on the hill. Okay, so now this is the second portion of this three segment project that we've done, which is cumulative 20 kW. Here is another 5k array of the Twin Peak panel. Um, and also, the, something that most people may not be aware of is with these Twin Peaks is that the module is complete. Um, so it gives a performance availability that's uh, way out there compared to some other panels, I think, in personal opinion, um, and I really do favor these. Um, another thing about this array is if uh, some people that are familiar with solar may say, why did we lower um, the array down on the Iron Ridge so low? Um, the customer wanted the lower piping hid, you know, aesthetically. Um, so in order to accommodate that based off of the blueprints that was given to us on Iron Ridge, we lowered the module units the rows down further to um, keep that clean. If you want to see kind of how that we tried to neaten this up the best we could, um, we tried very carefully to keep the ground, the ground hidden, everything zip tied up. The outputs from the conduit we tried to drop out as high as possible. Um, now, you know, I don't claim to be a master at anything. We're always learning when we're out in the field, um, but I do think that this was done about as precise as you can get. Um, and like I said, this is three inch rigid pipe. 
we put this in this install was completed in about eight days time frame under some of the worst conditions it was mud everywhere rain um, pretty much every uh, weather type has went on here from warm weather to snow you name it um, and we were still able to accomplish it in the timeline that we had planned um, I'm going to take you into the structure now into this workshop here and we'll show you uh, where everything goes into it from there okay so now we're in the workshop here and if you want to take a look around here you can see all the uh, um, components and everything that this is being ran by there's everything from drill presses over on the far wall over there to the left um, to a frequency drive unit here on the wall we'll show you in a minute to band saws presses um, the sky is the limit and all this is being powered off grid off the solar array um, with the exception of the unit here that requires the frequency drive it was still left to the utility company and the large welding units is left to the utility company everything else was segregated over to the small panel um, and it's ran off of one magnum which you can see in here on the charge board and the battery bank this also runs uh, a well pump that's separate it runs a, a small cottage which we can show you outside as well air conditioning units um, all sorts of tooling and um, we also left the availability that he can run the smaller welder equipment unit if if they want to uh, I really want to always meet our customers needs and exceed that and also their expectations if at all possible um, with this system it's got the simple MEARC remote so it's a push of a button turn her on and off and you're off grid this also powers a small barn it also powers a uh, propane heating unit for a greenhouse um, like i said a uh, well pump but also an irrigation system uh, there is a lot of loads actually i just want to go ahead and open the box here and show you like there is a ton of loads that we've moved over um, that has ran off this um, we did move the compressor unit um, but we moved it back because of such a high demand on the power um, they didn't want to that to be such a large drain on the battery bank so we actually moved it back to the utility company but it was running off grid too um, so there is a lot of capability that you can run off a small setup and then once you start stacking additional inverters the sky is literally the limit um, I'll step out the door right here and I'll show you the small cottage that's being powered off this as well kind of for the tiny house people um you know that small cottage the pond pump is also being powered off this uh, as well to aerate the pond for their fish and everything that they have there and so that pretty much concludes the second install um, this is the second segment as you can see uh, in relation to where it's located um, compared to the first install that we done now the other one we're going to go to another end of the property and show you the barn and another cottage that is completely off grid as well Okay, so we're here at the last segment of this install we've done. Um, everything's going to be uh, hopefully grass green here come summer, um, but the uh, little bit of there's a little bit of work left here as far as um, turf grass and things like that goes. But the array is oriented southwest. Okay, and the uh, we try to keep that conduit access as clean as possible as well, so there's just as minimal footprint here as possible. Um, and these panels, originally we were going to put 290s. I got so many projects going on, I've actually forgot what we mounted. Is those are actually 345 watt modules because the other 290s were not available at the time. Um, we ended up putting those up in place. And I also want to say thank you to Hurricane Wind Power. They've been really helpful with us over the years uh, with getting systems uh, for customers put together and everything. And all, all the components pretty much you see from the solar came directly from Hurricane Wind Power. Um, the customer's got a rain catch system um, to complement the uh, whale pump that's, that's also off grid now. Um, but as we walk in here, this, this structure's still uh, going through finish work. Um, but our, our part has been done. This is also, all, like I said, all the AC work has been done by Thomas Electric with the exception of the rough end of this structure um, that was done before we arrived. But the power that we have coming in is very simple. And we'll see the other side of the wall in just a moment. It'll make a lot more clarification. Um, this building and the, t uh, the small cottage next door has the ability as well to either be fed from the utility company 
or off the solar only. Um, and you can segregate that so that there is no feed. The separation is there where there's no feed from the utility company as well. Um, but if you engage that to the solar, the power is coming first from the inverters and if for any reason they needed to back up, um, that is available as well. A gen feed backup could also be added to this at a later date if desired. And also another inverter could be added because we've always make sure to put enough service feed um, for addition later so that you're not out extra money whenever you go to add on. It's just pretty much uh, like Lego blocks stack and go. And that's kind of how we build our systems too is compartmentalized so that you could add more to it, more charging systems later, more inverters later in a heartbeat. Um, and so all that panel is fed from the solar and also a potential from the utility company. Um, and then return from this panel here goes back to the cottage, which feeds it. Um, and all those loads plus the well pump that uh, feeds this area is off grid as well over there. And I'll step around and we'll show you the inverter system just in the other room. Okay, so now what you see in here, the, the structure, like I said, it's being finished out right now. Uh, we were here originally with the rough end, and now they're, they're doing a lot of the finish work inside. This is the footprint that we left with the solar. Um, as you can see, a very minimal footprint taken up in the structure um, and can be closeted off, etc. cetera. Um, another inverter can be added to this system at a later date. Um, so that is definitely a potential that can be done. Um, the conduit that you see fed in, that's coming from the solar array out there, so minimal footprint on it as well. And this feed that's coming in, this is from the utility, and then that's going back out to the load. And pretty much that, it concludes um, this, this solar setup. Um, the house, if you want to step outside with me just real quickly, I can show you. Uh, this is the small cottage that's fed off that. Also a, uh, a decent size air conditioning system is uh, fed off that as well. And all these loads run completely off one inverter unit uh, currently. Um, now later, there may be uh, between this workshop here and the tooling and other things, another unit added. But that's the thing we try to make sure and accommodate for that for the customer um, so that later down the road, you're not in a pickle. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the tour of this install. Um, it took cumulative between um, the eight days that we were in the field doing the construction on the superstructures and the solar array work and all the DC side. And then it took about two days and a half um, on the AC side of things. So we can be in and out for a customer very quickly. You see the scope of how large this project was. We don't waste time and we want to deliver the very best every time. So if you want to reach out to us, you can visit us at www.offgridcontracting.com and I look forward to working for you.